So I've been thinking about this video for a few weeks now, and obviously while it was during Pride, I wanted to be more Pride related content. I mean, to me, Pride is 365, and I wanna talk about this topic, which is kind of like the revelation aha Oprah moment that I came to while I was DIYing this bookcase behind me because it is so, to me, it's so funny, actually, because I was sitting there, I'm DIYing this bookcase, and I'm thinking, it it really became to me a, a the aha moment that Oprah talks about all the time, where it's like, oh, okay, like this, it's so random, but it just felt to me like DIY, as well as makeup, to be honest, is a really great metaphor for manifestation because they are both really, really about trusting the process, right? Because when you are doing a DIY, like something as big as this bookcase, for example, you're really kind of banking on the idea that it's going to look like something interesting when it's all done. Because obviously, you know, painting all of these bookshelf pieces, when everything's empty, you're like, I have, you can't really think about what it's gonna look like when it's all together. You're just kind of doing piece by piece, you know, trying to figure out what is going to look the most interesting. And you can't see it because thankfully it's not in the camera view, but up at the top where I started, there's like this really thick pink, part because I was originally thinking, okay, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to color block it, right? So I'm going to do, you know, one row is going to be pink, one row is going to be orange, one row is going to be pink, one row is going to be orange, and then going down, it's going to be pink, orange, pink, orange. But then as I was actually doing that, and I started like kind of pushing the brush away from me and creating these almost like streak effects, I guess you would call it, I was like, oh, I kind of like how this looks. What if I did this both colors together, kind of like streaking across each other? And so I sort of accidentally came across this almost, people have told me it looks almost like tie dye, which I think is really cool. And I think actually is accurate. It kind of does give like tie dye vibes. And so it happened almost accidentally. You know, my original vision was like, okay, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it very just color blocking because I love color blocking. I think color blocking is a very interesting way to do things. So I was like, yeah, that'll work. You know, we'll do some color blocking on here. But when I actually sat down, was painting it and doing the process, I realized, oh, actually there's other ways to do this that are still interesting and that are still actually probably more interesting than what I was originally planning and aesthetic, more aesthetically pleasing than what I was originally planning. And so now I have to say, okay, well, let's go for something entirely different from what I was thinking. And I really, truly, truly feel like that is, to me, that is like the ultimate example of how manifesting works too, because it's like, you know, you have this idea in your head of what you're trying to manifest and what you're trying to make happen for yourself. And maybe along the way you realize that what you're going for, it does still work and it's gonna still happen, but maybe it's gonna look different from what you were expecting. And actually Jinx Monsoon said that when she was on Broadway for Chicago, she was talking about how she said, you know, you have to leave room in your dream for like, reality. Because I think when you have these big ideas and big plans and big dreams, as you know, I myself do, as a lot of people do, you sort of, I don't want to say get lost and, you know, forget the reality, but you sort of kind of idealize things and you don't remember that like things happen, life happens, things get a little tricky and complicated. So maybe it's not going to look as picture perfect as what you're thinking in your head. More often than not, what you're trying to do isn't going to be as like picture perfect smooth sailing as you would like it to be. Unfortunately for all of us, like that's just not how it goes. That's not how life goes. Like things require challenges or, you know, even if they don't require challenges, they're gonna have challenges because that's just how life goes. 
You know what? I originally thought I was going to put something on top of this, but I actually like how icy that looks. It gives me very like early 2000s eyeshadow vibe. So I'm going to leave that. I think focusing on like the negatives and the possible or even the possible negatives is always a bad idea. You know, you know that things probably aren't going to be as smooth as they feel in your mind when you are visualizing because that's just, you know, that's the reality of the situation. Like anybody who has ever visualized, you know, or who has ever daydreamed or whatever. I mean, you know that things are not going to be as smooth as maybe you envision them, but you hope that they'll be smooth enough that it's not going to be like, you know, a constant thing, or maybe even, you know, it's smooth enough that you'll keep going. I just, I do find it very, very interesting, right? When you think about when you're making something, especially something that's like a larger project, right? If you're writing a novel, we all know anyone who has ever written any kind of book, but even like scripts or, you know, video ideas or whatever. I think the idea as it looks in your head is always going to be different from the idea as it ends up on the page or the video or whatever, right? Like so often the way I envision something in my head, especially with like novels, cause I've been writing novels for years. I feel like so often the, the vision that I have in my head changes quite a bit as the book goes on. And I would say every single time it's for the better that that's the case. You know what I mean? Like for me, every single time my book goes through a round of edits or rewrites or whatever, it always gets better. It always gets more interesting. It always gets more dynamic. So I feel like the fact that things change over time is only a good thing. You know what I mean? And like this makeup look too is a perfect example of that, right? Because in my head, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do like a purple eye look. I didn't really have anything specific in mind. I just knew I wanted to do purple. And I love how this looks. And that's why I say, I think makeup is a, is a perfect example of like trusting the process as much as DIY is and as much as manifesting is, you know, it's all about trusting the process. It is all about trusting your instincts, I think, to a degree as well. It's about like trusting like, okay, I am going to do what I know how to do and just kind of let things happen as they're gonna. And I think that's easier said than done when it comes to like, you know, trying to make your dreams happen and like manifest something big. Like, you know, if you're trying to manifest a new car or a relationship or a house or something like that, I think in a lot of ways, it's easier said than done to say, oh, you just got to trust the process. You got to do, you got to know that it's going to happen and just do what you do. That's easier said than done when you're trying to do something like that. When it's something like painting, you know, a project like I painted, I feel like it's easier to say, trust the process because you're like, okay, well, if I don't like it, I can just start over. But nobody wants to start over on, you know, making, making a dream happen or making, you know, something that they're trying to do happen for them. Nobody really wants to start over from scratch with that. You can, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I feel like it's, I don't want to say it's depressing, but it's like, I don't want to have to start over from scratch. I worked so hard to get where I am. Like, why do I have to start over? But sometimes I think starting over can be a good thing, honestly. I think sometimes starting over is extremely necessary. Like sometimes starting over is the only way to move forward. Oh my God, there is like some huge truck. You got to trust the process. You just, you have to trust that things are gonna work out whether or not they look like it initially. And that is a very hard thing to do. Like, do not get me wrong. That is not an easy skill to learn of trusting the process, especially depending on how big the thing that you're trying to do is. It can be very, very difficult to trust the process when something you're doing, like you have a long way to go to it being completed, completed, quote unquote, completed. And that's definitely how I felt about this bookcase behind me. It was such a trust the process moment because I was like, I don't really know what this is going to look like until it's done. I know what I'm imagining that it's going to look like, but until I actually put on the, the two different colors, I think I started with pink and then I kind of like crossed over into the orange and then I went back to the pink and I kind of went back and forth 
between the two colors. But even then, until I started like seeing sections of it, it was very hard to imagine what it was gonna look like finished because it was so different from what I had originally. What I originally had was this very, to me, boring and white thing. And now I have to make that into something more interesting. I have to make that into this idea, this very colorful idea that I have. And I really just was not sure how that was gonna go because I couldn't, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see what I was working on. So what I've learned is like trusting the process is such a crucial part of, and actually, you know what, I, I gotta say, and this is, again, I'm kind of like on the same subject, but also like changing the subject. I will say for me, making YouTube videos is definitely exam an example of trusting the process because so often when I'm filming something, I will get in my own head and feel like, oh my God, this sucks. This is not good. This isn't going the way it should. Like, it's just terrible. And then I'll watch the footage back and I'll be like, there was literally nothing wrong with that. And also you can edit around the like rough spots. Like, you know how to do this by now, but I still do get in my head. And so it is still an example of like making videos is very much for me a trust the process moment because I'm very much sitting there like, oh my God, this is not working out. This is not looking good. Why is this so bad? And it's like, it's not so bad. You have to literally trust yourself. And that can be really challenging is what I find. It, I don't know why. I don't know why it is so hard to trust the process, especially for something, you know, I've been doing YouTube videos now for, oh God, five, six years, I think. I've been doing them since 2017. So you can do the math on that. I've been doing them for quite a while. And so you'd think I would have a pretty good grasp on trusting the process of making videos because I know by now how that goes. I know how it goes that it can be, there can be challenges. When you're filming a video, there can be a lot, a lot, a lot of challenges. I do think partly, you know, I'm my own worst critic. I always have been. I am a Virgo, so I am a bit of a perfectionist, though I try not to be. And I think that's kind of what's fun about my makeup is like, I don't think I've perfected this makeup. Makeup. I don't think there is a way to perfect this type of makeup because it's just so clowny and a little camp, I will say. But it's so like over the top dramatic that you really can't, there's no way to do this in a way that someone would call it perfect. You know what I mean? Because it's just ridiculous. It's over the top. Even Trixie Mattel would say this is too much blush. And yet I like it. I look like a little strawberry. My God, I look like a little strawberry. That's so cute. So so my final thoughts are thus. Well, DIYing this bookcase, I, I definitely learned to adjust my idea of what I was expecting, but I also learned that you have to trust the process. You have to let things change and evolve as they need to. And I think you will have a better product for having done so. I feel like makeup is the same way. I feel like everything that I do, even this video, even, you know, the videos I've made in the past, everything that I do, everything that I make, ultimately there's an evolution of what maybe you were thinking versus what actually happens. And I think that's never a bad thing. I think it's never a bad thing to reevaluate, to try new things and to see what happens. And I guess it's all just a matter of trusting the process and trusting that the vision that you have, even if it changes, even if it evolves, is ultimately the correct vision overall. I feel like that's kind of the most important thing. And I actually heard something really, really poignant yesterday from Murray Hill, who I love, by the way. Um, but it was kind of unexpected because he just happened to be on the Hot Goss podcast with Alaska and Willem. And he was talking about how dreams don't have deadlines. Talk about like an aha moment or like an aha sentence. Saying dreams don't have deadlines, I think really, it didn't awaken anything in me that I didn't already know, but it did feel like it kind of said aloud something that I think is easy to forget, especially when you have this like, great dream that you're working on or great thing that you want to accomplish. I think it's so easy to get bogged down in this idea of like, oh my God, it has to happen this time. It has to happen this time. It has to happen this time. And that was something that I think I've learned a lot 
since turning 30 as well, because in my head, you know, as a young person, it was like, my God, I have to do all this before I turn 30. I have to accomplish this before I turn 30. And now that I am 30, I'm kind of like, I'm not really on that timeline anymore. I, I'm past that point. I am past the 30 year mark or whatever, like you have to do it by 30. Now that I'm past that, I'm kind of like, okay, well, if I do it and I do this dream that I want, that's really what matters. It doesn't have to be by 30. It doesn't have to be by 40. I would love it to be sooner rather than later because it's something that I've worked on forever. But I do know that ultimately, like Murray said, dreams don't have deadlines. So whatever you're working on, whatever it is you're working towards, know that there doesn't have to be this like, doesn't have to be by this age. There doesn't have to be that kind of deadline. You can just do it when you feel like it. I think that's all I really have to say. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Tell me your aha moment of trusting the process. And of course, subscribe to this channel. And you can also subscribe to my members only Patreon at patreon.com slash And yeah, until next time, stay devilish.